Well, welcome back to Old Shano's Engine Shop. It's the next day. Yeah, got that out yesterday afternoon. Pretty, yeah, pretty smoothly really. It was good. So, so the plan for today, yeah, get it, get it straight onto this engine stand and uh, take all the bolt-ons and stuff off. Actually, I'll probably, I'll probably get it on the stand, um, take it outside because always forget about that coolant port. Um, flip it upside down, get the sump off. And um, yeah, have a look, see if we can identify the, the bearing or the, or the issue in the bottom end. Yeah, I'll we'll just do that straight up so we can see if that's, you know, not, and um, hopefully identify if that's the only issue. Uh, and then yeah, take everything else off and yeah, see what it looks like. So plan, I'll just uh, take the turbo and hot side off first and the fuel pump and the cold side uh, and then we'll take it out and tip it upside down and see what we find. So it's just sticking along pretty well. Got all the, all the bolt-ons and stuff off. So I'm just gonna take the head off now. And I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave all the injectors and the blow plugs in there. Um, that way I don't need to yeah, re get yeah, more ceiling washers and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I'll probably just take the yeah, cam sprocket off uh, and then head bolts and then just sort of lift it all off together. But no, that's all pretty good. The injection sprocket, that's, yeah, I should have done that while the belt and stuff was still on just to help, help hold, hold a bit of tension on it. Um, but yeah, we got that with two people and some, some leverage on some breaker bars when that came off. Not too bad. Uh, yeah, I guess it's, you know, the motor hasn't done that much work, so it wasn't that long ago that it was all done up and apart, so nothing's had time to sort of seize or anything. So. Um, but I'll keep going, I'll get this head off, and uh, yeah, then we get into the fun stuff. sump off um, <laughs> last last bolt always the way it's all rounded off it's just not moving at all so it's, it's nearly a dirty circle looking at that um, so yeah cool little trick if you find yourself in that scenario uh, I've just got a another nut 
and basically I'm just going to weld that to the top of it uh, and then that'll give me something to get a bit of purchase on to get it out. Uh, yeah, so it goes. This is a fun bit. Mm, I don't know what that is. I can dry it off and have a little look. Nothing feels too loose there. Eh? So nothing super obvious there. Eh? Yeah, nothing, uh, nothing moving excessively, as you can see. Um, so I'll just I'll take the pick up off and start pulling some bearings out. See what it looks like. Found that problem. She's a beauty. Not what I expected at all. It's going to focus in there. Hmm. There you go. That's a cracked crankshaft. Not what I had expected. Definitely not ideal. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know how available they are. Probably not very available is what I would think for something like this, so. Yeah, I just messaged that to Jason. He's the guy that's helping me out with all this, so. See what he recommends, but. Yeah, that's a, that's a proper problem. Alrighty, Monday morning. Time to make some decisions. Behind me is the 5L graveyard. The jigsaw puzzle. So we've basically been running through our options over the weekend. Licking my wounds yesterday a little bit, just trying to work out the best, uh, yeah, the best, the best way to go. It's sort of the, <clears throat> to the point where we we need to explore all options. We don't have a lot of time, so context is we've only got another week in this place or 10 days before it's it's sold unconditional, so we gotta go. Which doesn't leave a lot of time for engine conversions. <laughs> so, firstly, I guess the, the reason that this has happened, or the, the obvious reason that I can see is the 5L motor is a naturally aspirated engine. I've bought a rebuilt one, an exchange one. I've bolted a good turbo onto it, um, intercooler, giving it a bit of boost. Um, it's been, you know, it's been nothing but trouble, like I've said. Um, I, I finally got it running really good, and yeah, it's been really good since then. But since we've been up here, it's it's been heavier. The car's been heavier than it's ever been. It's um, it's been running around under load, higher revs than it than it's ever done before. So 
yeah, I think a few periods of overboost generally under load and a NA engine with all that extra compression is what's caused the problem. So my ideal option, and if I had a little bit more time would be to buy a, a 1KD FTV engine, which is the, the D4D Hilux engine. A much newer engine, far better engine. Conversion wise, not really simple. A lot of electrics, a lot of, yeah, a lot of work, basically. You'd, you'd need dashes, you'd need everything. A really big job. Um, the next best thing I'm thinking is a 1KZ TE, which was the basically the precursor to the 1KD. So it's a turbo engine as well. It came out in these bodies just a little bit later on. So 2001 to 2005, something like that. It makes, it makes a little bit more power. Um, it's a completely different block, a very sort of different engine. The troubles with that engine and the reason why I didn't do it originally uh, was because it's, again, it's an electronic injected engine, a different, different gearbox, different engine mounts. They're sort of the main things. Like since I originally started mucking around with this a few years ago, which is when we were trying to do this trip, I've put in the gearbox that would go with the 1KZ engine. I've found out recently as well that you can convert the electronic fuel pump on the 1KZ to a manual injection, a manual injection pump. And you just need to do a few mods to the fuel pump, which is, is this pump here, which I've, which I've done those mods to suit this engine. So it's got the boost compensator um, and it's sort of set up to run that, that 18 to 20 pound of boost. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thousands of dollars ahead of where I was when I originally was, was trying to do this. And these were all the expenses for the 1KZ that I hadn't, yeah, that I wasn't sort of prepared to spend the money on at that stage. So that's the ideal option. We're gonna ring around this morning and try and, well, A, make sure that there's nothing else that's gonna scare me with that conversion. See if it's, see if it's achievable essentially in a week and then see if I can get one within a few days, which is gonna be difficult. So that's gonna be first option. That's gonna be definitely ideally what we wanna do. Next option is gonna to be to buy, to get a new crank basically, um, to get a crankshaft that will suit this. Which, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's hard to know. The guys in the shop that helped me out with a bit of this stuff when I was putting this engine together, they assured me that there's plenty of people doing what I'm doing with this motor. And, I um, haven't had a problem with it, but yeah, I'm not as confident. Third option, um, Jason's gonna see if he can get a hold of an exchange engine, which will basically be another exact one of that rebuilt. Uh, that would mean we put this one back together and, and exchange it for a rebuilt engine. So they're basically our options. Ideal option, like I said, is the 1KZ engine. So we're gonna explore that first. And we're at the same time, Charlotte's gonna see if she can get a She's gonna do some ringing as well and see if she can come across a crank. Cause I think either way, if I can get a crank for this, I'll, I'll get it and I'll put it in. Put it back together and at least then it's, a, it's an, an engine that's, that's only done 40,000 Ks and I can, I can sell it to recoup a bit of cash. So yeah, hopefully, I'll start ringing in a minute. Hopefully with fingers crossed, I can find yeah, one KZ around about. Uh, firstly, I'm gonna just gonna make sure that I can convert it to mechanical and not have to worry about the rest of the electrics. But yeah, like I said, the engine mounts need to be moved forward or back. I can't remember which way. I think it's back. So I'll have to, I'll have to make an adapter plate to, to move the, the, the engine mounts back, which is a fairly big job. It's not unachievable and it's definitely something I can do, but um, yeah, it's sort of, yeah, it's something that, um, yeah, it's something I want a little bit of time. I should put the engine in, take it out, you know, muck around with it a bit. So if I can get one of these engines, I'm gonna to have to be able to get it up here within a few days. Let's uh, get on the phone and see what we can find out. So what I'm going to do uh, now is just get um, I'll get these pistons out, get the crank out, just clean everything up.
Okay, so I've got the, got the two piece crank out. Um, it's pretty impressive, really. Yeah, you know, solid cast steel, the amount of, the amount of force going through that to <laughs> snap it clean in two. That's, um, yeah. So we've worked out, um, since this morning, we've actually managed to, to put a fairly good plan together. Um, found a 1KZTE motor uh, out of South Australia, so that's on its way up to us as we speak. Uh, and a bell housing they've got there as well, so that'll suit the gearbox I've got in that at the moment. So, um, what we're going to do, oh, we also found a crank as well, so we've got a crank coming too, um, which is why I've pulled all this out. So, we're going to keep going with this uh, plan as, as normal. So, that'll be, um, yeah, new crank, new bearings, new rings, basically a soft rebuild. We'll put all that back together and get it back in the car so then the car is drivable. Um, we can move out of here properly and then we're over in Canada for a few weeks. So, um, yeah, basically park everything up for a few weeks. By the time we get back, that engine will be here. Uh, and then, yeah, Jason from In Motion Auto is going to help me uh, do a conversion on it. So, uh, I spoke with a guy in town who conveniently had a, as the same 1KZ engine with the uh, EFI pump and he's converted it to mechanical. Um, he basically confirmed exactly what I thought was that um, other than the physical throttle linkages and, and other parts, you know, mounting parts, um, it'll basically just fit straight on and then it might just require a bit of a manual tune uh, just to get the injector cycle right uh, for the engine. So, yeah, it's all pretty exciting really. There's only, yeah, the only, yeah, and then the only real thing after that is engine mounts and... Um, the old mate from the diesel shop seemed to think you should just be able to delete all the well he said he has deleted all the other um, sensors and that that come on the 1kz motor so you know no conversion's easy but it should be uh yeah it should be fairly straightforward as far as they come so yeah you'll get to see um yeah rebuild on this on the 5l proper rebuild on that and then a conversion to a 1kz so yeah become a bit of a of a car channel now, I think. Thanks for watching. Next week, Shane and Jason from Emotion Auto will be putting our Toyota 5L engine back together. If you liked this video, we'd love it if you clicked the like button. And if you want to see more content from us, make sure you hit subscribe. As always, thanks so much for watching. We do really appreciate it, and we will see you next week.